presentation on what lies ahead for the AU. 2016 is an interesting year because many elections are taking place. First of all, we had the election of Peace and Security Council members in January at the AU summit. And then in July will be elections for the eight commissioners, for the AU chairperson. As of course, Zana Lamini Zuma is stepping down. And also for the deputy. Um, so just quickly at a look at the Peace and Security Council, a uh, very important institution of the, uh, of the AU that meets several times a month and that deals with all the peace and security issues um, on the continent. Here is just a list of the previous members um, and the new members elected in January, as you will see, um, some of the heavyweight countries like South Africa, Algeria, Nigeria are back on the council. Um, and some other countries who are aspiring to be heavyweight countries like uh, Kenya, uh, Chad as well with its big military pre presence, and Uganda, Zambia are all on the um, council now for some of them for two years, some for four years. The challenges ahead for the PSC, massive challenges, are obviously. Um, first of all, from an institutional point of view, the PSC um, got a knock uh, in the last few months because of the way that the Burundi issue was uh, tabled and, uh, and handled. Um, People will remember that on the 17th of December last year, the PSC, the ambassadors in Addis Ababa, um, took the bold step to decide on um, an intervention force to stop human rights abuses in Burundi and to send um, 5,000 uh, troops to uh, Bujumbura, to Burundi. Um, and then a couple of months later, at the AU summit in January, which was very interesting, the heads of state then said, uh, took a step back and said, uh, no, no, actually, uh, we're not sending a force. We're going to try and uh, mediate and get a peaceful solution for the crisis in Burundi. Uh, and subsequently, there was a high-level panel of heads of state. And um, on the PSC report uh, website, which is part of the ISS website, you'll see um, two or three um, thorough analysis on how this affected really the image um, and the status of the PSC, which we now feel have been a little bit um, pushed aside to give precedence to the two heads of state of the AU. Um, but then um, other institutional issues that lie ahead, the, um, the PSC and the African Union will have to tackle huge financial problems. Um, we know the organization itself is struggling and especially its peacekeeping missions because the European Union is the main funder of, for example, the African mission in Somalia, um, AMISOM. And um, the, the, the donors have indicated they are going to reduce this funding by 20%. Um, we have on the table issues of um, alternative sources of funding. The AU is trying to get other ways to, to finance its own operations. But it's a huge challenge for the AU. And then other uh, smaller issues to make the PSC actually more effective. As I said, it meets at least once or twice a week. Um, it makes, it has its a very good website, uh, it's on Twitter, it makes a lot of decisions. But um, the question is still, are these decisions being implemented? Uh, is there somebody that's holding the PSC to uh, accountable? Um, at the PSC report, we do set the, uh, publish the agenda, look back at what had been decided. So um, there, there is uh, uh, the, the PSC report, in any case, is looking at the fact that there are many, many decisions that the PSC makes. and one doesn't uh, actually always see it translated on the ground. Um, it should encourage more debate, we feel, and also um, conduct uh, field missions. Uh, in the past uh, few months, uh, earlier this year, the PSC went to um, Guinea-Bissau. Um, it had a planned a field mission to Burundi that was then um, postponed. And that was one of the reasons why, as I'm saying, that. Um, the Burundi issue wasn't very good for the image of the, the PSC. 
um, just go to the next slide. Um, so, as I said, uh, this year we have the AU Commission elections. There's a little uncertainty about the date um, of the AU summit that's coming up. Initially, it was said, and I think, and I've read a lot, even one of the candidates for the AU chairs said it's going to be happening on the 17th and 18th of June. But in the official documents of the January summit, uh, it says 10 to 18 July, and I see there's a brand new website for the 27th AU summit now um, up, and it also says 17 and 8, 10 to 18 July. So 17 and 18 will then be the actual uh, assembly of heads of state. So there is a little bit of uncertainty around that date. It will be in Rwanda, in uh, uh, Kigali, a brand new fabulous conference center has been built. Um, uh, hotels run by the Radisson Blue, but one will probably have to make your um, hotel reservations pretty soon because Kigali is not like Addis Ababa that has got just an uh, endless number of hotels. So um, it's going to be a very interesting summit from an institutional point of view for the AU because we have um, the eight new eight commissioners that are going to be elected, the uh, deputy chairperson, and then of course the chairperson. Um, of the um, eight commissioners, four of the positions are there will be a new commissioner. Uh, those are. Um, uh, political affairs, infrastructure and energy, rural economy, uh, and agriculture, human science, human resources, sorry, and science in, and technology. Um, those commissioners have now either finished their four, four year, two four-year terms or are stepping down. Um, the commissioners of peace and security, very important position um, at the AU, social affairs, trade and industry, and economic affairs. Uh, those commissioners are all running for re-election. Um, now, uh, as, as, as I uh, indicate on the PowerPoint, interestingly, Egypt, uh, a country that hasn't been that present at the AU, uh, is um, proposing the most candidates for positions. Um, Cameroon as well. Um, even though President Paul Bia hardly ever attends an AU summit, it's interesting that Cameroon is uh, uh, trying to have a greater presence in the institutions of the AU. Interesting as well, South Africa is not proposing any candidates, uh, neither is um, Ethiopia. Um, the Peace and Security Council uh, Commissioner, as I said, is a very important position. and. Um, the um, uh, commissioner, Shmael Shergi, is quite popular. Uh, he's Algerian, but Nigeria has put forward a candidate uh, for this position, and it's its only candidate. So the feeling in Addis is uh, there's going to be a little bit of a standoff between Algeria and Nigeria because um, it won't look good for President Muhammadu Buhari. Some feel that if Nigeria has no position on the commission. Um, the ANC deputy chairperson, um, there are four candidates from Djibouti, Somalia, Cameroon, and Ghana. Um, they are all men, and uh, there are very strict rules in terms of uh, regional um, uh, representation in the commission and also uh, 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 gender base. Uh, so when you look at this deputy chairperson position, um, the feeling is in Addis that we might have another um, chairperson who is another woman like uh, Kosozana Tlamini Um So the most important issue then is um, the election of the IU Commission chairperson. Kosozana Tlamini Zuma is stepping down, she has indicated. We have not had any formal statement from her, but definitely her spokesperson has indicated she she is not up for re-election and from various other sources, um, and also Sadek is fielding another candidate, so she's stepping down. The question is why? Um, 
only four years. That's not a long time. Um, is she stepping down because she has political ambitions in South Africa? I think many people see that as maybe the uh, most important uh, reason. She is um, one of, uh, together with Cyril Ramaphosa, one of the favorites to actually succeed uh, former her ex-husband um, Jacob Zuma. So that's one reason. Um, but also um, she might think that uh, given what happened in 2012 with the election, uh, she might not get re-elected. She is not very popular amongst uh, especially Francophones and um, others in the Commission. The question can also be asked in this um, context, what does it mean for South Africa's role uh, at the AU? Because South Africa fought so hard to get that position. And in 2012, people will remember uh, in January, we had three rounds of election, former chairperson Jean Ping then didn't get a two thirds majority. The elections were suspended for six months. And then in July, Lamini Zuma, made it and we're still not sure how South Africa managed to uh, convince the countries who hadn't voted for it in January to vote for it in July. But that is passed. Although this controversial election in January, um, my feeling is and many uh, in the AU that it, it really tarnished her term at the AU um, because people feel it was like a a bold move by South Africa to impose its candidate. And also South Africa completely ignored um, one of the basic um, rules or unwritten rules in the AU and in the United Nations that big countries um, shouldn't um, hold key positions. Um, and that has been the case at the AU. The first uh, chairperson, Amra Esi, was from Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, he was temporary. We had the former uh, president of uh, Mali, uh, uh, Konare, who was um, from a small country, Mali, Jean Ping from Gabon. And then we had Kosazana Dlamini Zuma. And interestingly, we will see, I'm keeping it for the last few minutes, the candidates are from smaller countries. I better go quickly. Um, so uh, I think it tarnished her uh, term. There are many questions um, why South Africa fought so hard and is now completely withdrawing and is now I've got no candidates for this commission, although it is on the PSC. Um, we can look maybe another time when I mean, there's more time to her, at her legacy, but we will be writing about it in the PSC report. I do feel she has made important changes in terms of gender and uh, gender representation throughout the Commission, but also um, she launched a couple of projects on the continent that are important for women, like um, trying to um, fight the young uh, uh, age of uh, little girls and uh, young women being forced to marry in certain countries. So some countries have come forward and Zambia and saying, okay, we're going to write this into law. There have been um, a couple of things and examples like that. She's also nominated a, a, a woman as um, a Binta Job as a special envoy for the AU for gender issues, peace and security. Um, her legacy, I think it will be clear that she didn't have a great impact on peace and security issues because she didn't really pay much attention to that. Um, so, uh, I've just got a few minutes now, but uh, surely uh, everyone is interested to know there are three candidates for um, succeeding uh, Kosa Sanat Lamini Zuma. Very important, of course, are their CVs, their regional representation, um, keeping a balance between Anglophones and Francophones, as I said, and uh, it's important to include enough women um, in, the, in the AU. So the first candidate from SADC, from Botswana, is uh, Dr. Benson Moitoy. She is a former a minister uh, since 2013, former foreign minister, but she's had other cabinet positions like works, communication. She got the endorsement of SADC, um, which was really interesting. It was a couple of weeks ago. And um, SADC seems to feel that because of course Azana Dlamini Zuma is not staying another term, um, that it is still Sadek's turn. 
um, and that Sadiq can have another four years. But there's, of course, a lot of disagreement in Atlas about that because Ping stayed one term and there wasn't an automatic um, belief that Central Africa would get another turn. So these issues all play in the, the next few um, weeks and months, we'll see uh, those that infighting going on. The other um, candidate from Uganda is Dr. Speciosa Kazibwe. She's um, more well known, I think, um, amongst the three candidates. She is um, she's a medical doctor. Interesting because Nkosa Zanad Laminizuma is also a medical doctor. Um, she is currently serving or just served uh, um, up until now on the AU panel of the WISE. Um, so she's very well known in the AU. She was the UN uh, Special Envoy for HIV AIDS. Um, she was Vice President of Uganda. Um, for quite a long time until 2003 and importantly also she speaks um, English, French and Swahili um, which might help, which might be a positive for French speakers because Zanad Lamini Zuma, um, I never heard her speak one word of French although she had French lessons but just maybe even greeting um, I use summits and so on. It was very rare in any case to, to hear her speak French. Then the third and the last candidate is Mr. Mokoi. He is um, from Equatorial Guinea. He is Minister of Foreign Affairs of Equatorial Guinea. We don't have any other information. And I must say, um, my colleague Jan uh, Betziki from um, who is in our Addis office, uh, he is the one who actually scouted around the corridors of the AU and did a sterling job to get these names because I don't think uh, many people have already um, got it and, uh, and publicized it. So um, I, I don't know if there are going to be any surprises, any last minute uh, candidates. We never know at the AU. Um, but these are the three candidates that we know of at this point. So he was a special envoy of President Obiang Gema. And it could be that Equatorial Guinea fights quite hard for this position. So that might count in his favor. Um, this is from Central Africa. So we have Central Africa, SADC, and then East Africa candidates. Um, and it is really going to be very interesting. And as I said, a lot of lobbying. It's not only the candidate CV that counts, but many other issues. And as I said, we can see that uh, they are all from small countries, uh, small and uh, middle-sized countries. It's possible. It's possible. It depends a lot on the... Um, actual uh, chairperson and it's and wh whoever you know how um, engaged they are and how active they are Shmuel Shaggy really you know goes around the continent he's always in the news he speaks to journalists and uh, his predecessor Lamamra who is also from Algeria also did a good job but one would perhaps see that the Commission for Political Affairs takes a more high profile uh, position the um, the, name. I, uh, the former um, commissioner from Nigeria was quite good, but um, peace and security, the peace and security department seems to be carrying more than it can actually handle. So political affairs should look at things like elections. They do. They are the ones who send election observers and so on. But if we have a more charismatic, maybe um, a more involved um, chairperson, um, I think peace and security will always be important because you have the PSC that is, as I say, for, according to the Constitutive Act, very important. And it also oversees, it has to, for example, look at the mandate um, of Ami Psalms, approves the mandate, and has the peace um, operation. But um, it would be good. I mean, social affairs also um, should, I mean, has been looking at things like um, migration. Um, the the commissioner there from Mali is quite um, active, but it would be good to get a better balance. <laughs>